Hey guys, this is Adam Lane with PocketNow.com. Next up, we're going to look at the People Hub, Email, Calendar, and Office. So right up here is my People Tile, and it's showing little tiny pictures of people in my contacts. So let's press that. And here we get to the recent people. These are people that I recently emailed or text messaged or phone called. So you got about eight of them are going to show up here. And they're popping with their names are showing up or their status updates. Those are all going to come up uh, occasionally. If I go over here, this is uh, all my people. So I can scroll through here and see everybody. Or I can search and just type somebody and get right to him and this little button will add a contact so that's a quick way to add somebody you can choose which account you want to add them to and you know add all their information there over here is the what's new feed this will show Facebook and Windows Live updates and we got there it goes the little uh, message icon, the plus symbol, that'll let you comment on those Facebook updates. And you can see when somebody else comments, it'll show a number of how many people commented on that. So here we go. You can make a comment. and that should do it. There it is. So that's your feed and then you're back to the recent people. Okay, if we tab and hold, what do you got? Settings. We've already seen those. Okay, next up let's do email. Which email account should I go to? How about Hotmail? Each email account has its separate kind of app icon that you can pin to the start menu or it'll show up in the programs listing. So here we are. You got all, you got unread, you got urgent, and you got a menu. So if you want to delete a bunch of these, I can just tap on the side and that shows up our check marks, which is really nice because they're not always there being cluttering up the interface. So you can select a bunch of them and delete with the trash can or move them all at once like that. Optionally, you can press that button and bring up the checkboxes. So the plus icon, here we go. If we bring up the menu, you can see the uh, what each icon means. So there's new, folders, or sync. So let's look at folders. Now by default, it only syncs the inbox. But if we say show all folders, we can go to different folders. And then I can say sync this folder. And that will turn on sync for this folder. So it will always download new messages for this folder. You can see it's checking for messages. Uh, I don't know if we want to wait. So there's a folder. Let me go to another one. Drafts. This one does not sync at all. Not in Hotmail, not in IMAP emails, not in Exchange. When it comes to draft messages, it's either going to be on your phone or on your real email account which is a total pain because what if I started a draft email on my desktop and I want to finish it on my phone sorry you're out of luck no way to sync drafts that's a pain okay so let's see if the junk folder synced now it's still working 
Here's our settings. We can do an email signature. You can BCC yourself if you want to copy your sent message, but usually it'll copy into the sent messages folder. Sent items, rather. There you are. Okay, let's get back to the inbox. I have anybody with a picture here. Anyway, the emails show up really nicely. If uh, this was from a contact that I know, a big picture would show up right there and it looks really good. So by default, it doesn't download pictures in HTML emails, which is good because you don't always want uh, people knowing that you re read this message. See, it says internet pictures are blocked. So if I tap it, then it'll download all my pictures. And you can zoom out, see the whole thing. And it works just like Internet Explorer. All right, that, so that's pretty good HTML email. Next, let's check out the calendar. So you got three views for the calendar, agenda, day, and month. You can see the month, there's a lot of little tiny tiny type in the, in the days. That's not meant to be readable, it's just an indication of how much stuff you have going on that day. So that's all that's really used for. Here's the day, and you can do a new appointment. You can't really drag the time. So if you want to do a new appointment, you really have to go in here and choose how long is it. Or if we do custom, you can choose the end time. So that's kind of a pain. If you're used to the way Windows Mobile uh, Classic used to, where you can just drag the, the area that the appointment would take up. Okay, so there's our clock. You can change the time. And that's going to make a new appointment. Here we can choose which account we want to add the calendar appointment to. Okay, I'm going to cancel. And here we have calendars. Here's my Windows Live calendar is going to be green. My exchange calendar is going to be red, and my Google calendar will be brown. So that way you can have different calendars all show up there. Alright, that's it for the calendar. And the Office Hub starts off on OneNote, and if I do all, I tap that. This is our pages, and if I do refresh, it's gonna. If I didn't do it already, it would ask you if you want to sync with SkyDrive, and when it does that, it's gonna create a notebook on SkyDrive based on your Live ID called Personal Web, and it's gonna put these uh, pages in there automatically. And then you can sync that with your desktop from SkyDrive. And unfortunately, it will only sync that single notebook with SkyDrive. For now. But there's still other notebooks because you can sync with SharePoint 2010. Now here's another bug. Well, maybe it's a feature, but it's a limitation nonetheless. If I make a section in my notebook that is password protected, like this one right here, protected section, it's not going to sync. You're not going to be able to open it. It's not going to ask you for a password. You're not going to be able to access it at all. So that's kind of a pain. You can only sync unprotected uh, OneNote sections. And when you're in a page, you can pin it to your start menu. You can email it, 
and you can refresh it. This one, I think, okay, here we are. And when you're in editing mode, you can type stuff, and you've got some more options down here. You can create a list, you can insert a picture, or do an audio recording. And here's some formatting options. Unfortunately, if you do an audio recording and then do something else, like we got to answer a call, that audio recording stops. So see, it's done. You can't be recording a whole meeting and then also check an email. So that's a bug, or at least a pain. Next up is our documents listing. You can create a new document. You got Excel, Word, or PowerPoint. These are all pretty basic, but they have uh, commenting support. You can save as and send. Same for Word. You got the search, you got outline mode. And here's PowerPoint. If you're in the edit mode, you can change some text. And you can also move slides, go to the next one, edit the notes. So that's pretty decent. Then we got the SharePoint stuff. I don't have a SharePoint 2010 server, but uh, they would show up here, and your SharePoint workspaces would show up here. There's no tap and hold menu there. But that's pretty much it for Office. So there you go, and that's it for now.